Be sure to take a tech news on the first day of every month to prevent pink eye. Ask me how I know. So with all the headlines lately being dominated about how you can't get your hands on an AMD or Nvidia GPU, it might be refreshing news that Intel is reportedly testing out its new discrete gaming GPUs. Specifications for an entire product stack have been leaked, with the top-end SKU featuring 4096 stream processors and either 8 or 16 gigs of VRAM, meaning it may end up competing with the 3070 or 6800 series on the AMD side. Uh, although we don't have any pricing information yet, it does look like Intel is trying to get the chips to market before the end of the year. And because Intel owns its fabs, maybe the card shortages won't be as bad when they do arrive on store shelves. But that's a big maybe, kind of like betting Linus won't drop something on any given workday, like your employment. Oh, come on! <laughs> <laughs> if you thought your shiny new home gaming rig has an impressive number of cores, check out this upcoming server CPU from AMD. A new leak has indicated that the company's new Epic CPU, codenamed Genoa, Genoa, I guess, maybe? I, I, anyway, whatever, it's one of those things, will feature 96 cores and 192 threads. That's more cores than an apple tree, I checked. The new platform will push so much data that it'll use a socket featuring over 6,000 pins and will also have a 320 watt TDP they couldn't push it 100 more watts. There's DDR5 support as well, which is not only faster with lower power consumption, but also has ECC support included as a standard feature, sort of, uh, but Epic will definitely have it. Although Genoa is a server part that probably won't find its way into your home PC unless you're uber enthusiasts with serious cash to burn. It's smaller, five nanometer process, it may actually not be smaller, and DDR5 support do give us a look at what might be ahead for desktop Ryzen chips. Maybe a higher TDP that can heat a chicken chamber. Now that's epic. Yeah. Are you as sick of smartphone notches as I am? Well, looks like Apple has caught on, finally, as it sounds like this year's iPhone lineup is going to have a reduced notch area, according to Ming-Chi Kuo, longtime Apple soothsayer. This appears to be a prelude to next year's iPhones, which should abandon the notch completely in favor of a punch hole camera. Why? <sighs> Just keep the notch. I want the notch. I don't want a punch hole. As for this year, it looks like we'll still be getting an iPhone 13 mini, despite the fact that no one really bought or cared about the 12 mini. Hmm. That's actually unfortunate. Another thing Quo is confident of is that the iPhone 13 lineup will, once again, use the lightning connector that dates all the way back to the iPhone 5. Uh, no. So another year will go by without Apple caving into pressure. Maybe it's time for an intervention. Today's quick bits are brought to you by Ridge Wallet. Woo! <laughs> They're light, sleek, and designed to fit easily into your front pocket. Check this out. And for added security, they even have RFID blocking plates to keep attackers from stealing your information. There are over 30 colors and styles to choose from, including Damascus Steel and 18 karat gold. Save 10% and get free worldwide shipping at Ridge Wallet by using offer code LINKED at ridge.com slash LINKED. On to quick bits. If you're in the market for a serious boatload of Mario nostalgia, you should open your wallets soon, as Nintendo is going to stop selling the bundle containing Super Mario 64, Sunshine, and Galaxy at the end of this month, as well as Super Mario 35, the Battle Royale title. Oh no. Everyone's favorite <laughs> Mario entry. <laughs> Nintendo says it intended the release as a special commemorative for Mario's 35th anniversary, so pff, who knows if they'll be around to buy for the Switch in the future showing us, once again, why many of us have such a love-hate relationship with Nintendo. Nintendo, please stop re-releasing Super Mario All-Stars. Seriously, stop it. Put some work into it! Do something! Unsurprisingly, it looks like this year's E3 has been cancelled. At least, the in-person event, anyway. There will still be a digital E3 this year taking place between June 14th and June 17th, including keynote addresses, game streams, and awards shows. However, with E3 continuing to charge very high fees to developers to be part of the event, it remains to be seen how many games will be featured at this virtual E3 instead of an alternative event such as Summer Game Fest, or hosted by the developers themselves, with Blackjack and Hookers. 
If you do cloud streaming on Xbox, your games might start looking a bit nicer in the future, as reports indicate Microsoft is testing 1080p streams. And while this might not sound cutting edge in 2021, because it's not, streams are currently limited to 720p in order to save bandwidth and server resources. Other streaming services are already offering 1080p streams, and for my, for my knowledge, it's basically been that way since 2010, I don't know. So this will be welcome news for Xbox users, especially as the future of competing services, like Google Stadia, remain uncertain. In the meantime, maybe just game on the smallest screen possible. Like those health and safety warnings always say. No, oh, Flappy Bird. And it looks like Oculus's new Quest 2 headset will support refresh rates up to 120 hertz, according to the company's developer roadmap. There's a good chance it'll show up this month as an experimental feature, so hopefully this will lead to smoother VR across the board as time goes on, and less puking as a result. I hate Facebook. <laughs> Facebook sucks. Yeah. Mark Zuckerberg. He's an I'm just here. I'm just here for the ride. Are you tired of large Windows 10 updates failing to install for some mysterious reason? Microsoft thinks it finally has a fix, as it's going to start pushing servicing stack updates, or SSUs, to users. These will try to ensure that your Windows Update feature is properly patched before attempting to install a major update, which sounds like a really good idea that they probably should have done many years ago. Wow, actually, that's exactly what the script is saying now. I feel like this is something they should have done back in the Windows 98 days, but better late than never, right? Smart. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's our show. Come back on Wednesday for more. We'll even beam tech updates directly into your ears.